go again. Okay, let's do it one more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. When you have the opportunity to cast fresh talent, you have a wonderful opportunity to cast the best people that there are. I really didn't want to compromise in any way. I knew that movies live and die by the cast. You could have great effects and great sets, and if you don't have real emotional human beings that you enjoy watching and experience the film through, then you don't have a, an emotional connection. Hey, hey Jonah. Hey, Hello, Jonah. You don't enjoy watching these two boys. As cool as the robots and the Zorgons are and the ships are and the house is, you don't really have a movie. So we've been extremely blessed and lucky with these guys and how talented and uh, they, they've just been so good. Where's Lisa? <laughs> Lisa is upstairs. When she came in on this, we all of us immediately responded to, she's so sharp, she has so much intensity, she's so vivid. And we thought, boy, the comedy that's gonna come out of the collision of this vivid, intense, really great girl with her brothers and with the aliens and with this mysterious astronaut really seemed like it was gonna be a great thing for comedy. Um, and she's been fantastic. You guys actually set the house on fire! Please. When I read the script, which was clever and funny and extremely adventurous, which was kind of different from anything that I'd ever done before. And um, I, I really liked the idea of doing a comedy. It's just something new, something I've never tried. And um, I'm really, I'm a big fan of John Favreau, the director. And so that was definitely a draw. And Kristen Stewart uh, was not anything like what I had originally envisioned in reading the script or what the studio had envisioned in that role. But she was just so luminous and so talented as an actor and so wonderful, and you just couldn't take your eyes off of her. You know, I knew that she had to play the sister. I just feel so safe around him. Cars. Shipmate enters cryonic sleep chamber for five turns. What the heck does that mean? We said, let's do something where Lisa's frozen through the movie. That was something that came up later. That wasn't in the original script. That was something that came up through development. And so what we came up with was that, you know, she gets frozen, and by getting frozen, She's still there, but she's not really aware of what's going on. She becomes a prop. And then later in the movie, she comes back to life and unfreezes and is part of the movie. So I figured for Lisa, we'd get a mannequin and we'd spray her with that and there would be this white frozen prop that we would throw around and have fun with. Well, you can't sell that to Stan Winston Sears. They Next thing you know, they were taking pictures of her and scanning her. The, the, the wonderful thing about Frozen Lisa is that's a... That's a work of art using every method of replicating a human being that we've been using for years. We start out with a body scan and they scan roughly, you know, because you're wearing clothes, they don't need to get it exact, but they scan for your body type and then you go in and you get molded. First they did my head and they did my legs, they did my arms. And then after all the molding, I had to come back a couple weeks later, and um, we, they had to paint me. I stood next to my next to my me, me, and they painted me. The finesse of it is the artists, the sculptors, who end up taking these the, these forms that have been cast from the actor, and laser scans of the actor, and subtly doing a final sculpt to make sure that the eyes are right because you, you don't cast somebody with their eyes open. Having the reference of photos and having reference of the um, laser scanning, she is literally just a really beautiful mannequin that because the artists have a good eye and can see when it looks right and when it looks real, knew how to paint her, knew how to give the depth and, and, and you could see that it was real and then using flakes and wax and all the, the typical frozen things that we would do to an actor and that we've been doing for years, but in this case, covered onto an, a replica of the actress that is perfect. I have to say, it's a trip seeing yourself in person because you, don't, you can see yourself on screen, which is also kind of weird, but to see yourself actually in person standing next to you, it's just a sensation that no one 
really has ever experienced before. And also the fact that she's blue and f icy and frozen. And every nuance, every freckle, every line on my face, it's just, it's there. It's amazing, they did a great job. Well, I got there and, and you couldn't tell, you know, you're looking to see if it's breathing. Uh, and it looked just like her. And they had gone through a process of making it look frozen without making it look dead. I mean, that was the other thing is you didn't want it to be like a horror movie. So you wanted it to be haunting and have life in its eyes, but also, you know, be obvious that it's frozen and not awake.